Hey guys, Trey here. Um, while you're waiting for the show to start, if you don't mind and you haven't already, coursecorrectionradio.com, we um, would love it if you would head over there, um, hit the little subscribe button you can put in your email, get any updates from our website sent directly to your email, which as many of you know, in this day of censorship is critical to staying in touch. You will also be able to um, get all of our articles and our blogs and the show notes to each live show and not live show that we do. That is coursecorrectionradio.com. Please head over there, if, like I said, if you haven't already, and subscribe. Just a friendly reminder, CCR Weekly is a variety show where we will talk about the news that is currently going on, as well as topics in the Bible that people really want to know about. If you are here just for the Bible topic, I completely understand. However, I do ask that you be patient with us as we get through the news because we are watchmen on the wall and Jesus commanded us to watch and that is what we want to help you do as well. So we will get to the biblical topic, but we are going to save that for last as it is the most crucial and important topic that we have. Thank you so much for all your support and your patience, and we look forward to hearing from you in our live chat. God bless you all, and we'll talk to you real soon. Never forget that none of us can go through this walk alone. We are a body, and as a body, we just want to say thank you to every single one of you that tune in every week to watch us both live and after the fact. And we also want to give a huge shout out to friends of ours that are so encouraging and can help you in your walk as well. So make sure you guys check out shakeandwakeradio.com. NYSTV.org, TruthRadioShow.com, and if you want to delve deep into the doctrine of Christ and what it is, we highly recommend you check out the Doctrine of Christ series on the Jimmy Vision YouTube channel, and you can find a link to their website in their show notes as well. Tons of resources for you at all of these places. Make sure you guys check out FOJCRadio.com for tons of stuff that just delves into the Bible front to back. And they have tons of resources that can help you as well. Thank you so much for all your support. And God bless every single one of you. It is Wednesday, my dudes. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to 33.3 News. My name is Trey Harris. Thank you for joining me this evening, so i got to keep it quiet. As you're listening to this, it's actually Wednesday, March 2nd, 2022. But as I'm recording this, it's late and everybody's asleep. So, let's get right into the news for today. Um, As you guys know, as of the recording... I believe the State of the Union is tonight. Now, I thought about starting a new segment with this called Real or No Real, um, where we take looks at news, um, see whether the headline is real or fake, but uh, we'll save that for another time. Um, But Babylon B had an interesting story that came out that had to do with the um, 
State of the Union was just going to be a dumpster that was lit on fire for 90 minutes. And as sad as it sounds, that is probably exactly what we're going to be dealing with. So, guys, keep the country in prayer. Because we can sit here and we can joke um, really all we want about things like this. But to be perfectly honest, um, this, we're in a sad state. And it does, really, that shouldn't matter what side of the aisle you're on politically. We are in a sad state. So this first story, now having said that, um, you know, this first story is a little humorous. Or would be if it wasn't so sad. But this is from Not the Bee. No, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! And it says, Pelosi says she isn't going to wear a mask at the State of the Union because she doesn't have a pre-existing condition. She's 81 years old, and that is the actual headline. This is a story by Harris Rigby. So much science. Nancy Pelosi, Democratic Speaker of the House, was asked whether or not she would wear a mask at the State of the Union address on Tuesday night. And her answer contains so much trusting the science. Um, And there is a tweet from Eric Wasson that says, Pelosi says she would not be wearing a COVID mask at the State of the Union tonight, but would if she had a pre-existing condition or young children. She says the speech will be pivotal in terms of timeline of COVID pandemic. Now, I'm not a doctor, but I can tell you this. You can find the, um, at least you used to be able to, you could find the graph and the chart showing the survival rating for each and every age group. And yes, Nancy Pelosi was in the ones that were most at risk. I won't tell you what they were because, unfortunately, that's the kind of stuff that gets you removed from platforms, but you can find the stuff on the CDC website, or you can check out our Rides of the Beast YouTube, uh, video that was removed from YouTube, and it's now on Rumble. Um, we'll try to leave a link in the description if you want to know more on that. But the article goes on to say, because she doesn't, because she doesn't have a, quote, pre-existing condition, Pelosi says that now she no longer has to wear a mask. Watch. To quickly ask you about that because the CDC mask guidance, of course, changed last week today. DC officially lifted its indoor mask guidance. Are you going to be wearing a mask tonight? No, I'm not going to be wearing a mask tonight. If I had little children or if I were around little grandchildren, I would because some of them would not be vaccinated. Or if I were around a person or were a person with a, a pre some kind of a condition that would make me susceptible to it. So I think people have to use their judgment about it. But I do think um, that it, it, if people make their own judgment, I make my own judgment that I won't be wearing a mask tonight. So I'm not really, I'm not picking on the lady. Um, So please don't think that I am, but the poor woman, she is getting almost just as bad as our president when it comes to bumbling over her words. This is why we need new, young uh, blood inside these elected offices. And guys, you need to check out the people that you're voting for. And we need to put people in office that have true biblical values and get out these elitist and secret society members. It's time for a new wave. Yes, not a red wave or a blue wave, but we need a red letter wave. We need people that teach the doctrine of Christ inside these offices. And, you know, here's the thing. People talk about, um, they talk about, you know, having a nationwide revival, and that that's just not realistic at this point. But a few, a remnant that is actually making a difference, a outspoken remnant, if all of us would just be willing to stand up and say, yes, I believe what the Bible says, and we do it unapologetically, a few of us can change this nation. He says, the Bible says in Second Chronicles seven fourteen, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and will pray and i will hear them and i will hear their land i uh i'll actually read that real quick because i'm gonna butcher it if i don't so let's check it out second chronicles 7 14 i'm still in second Kings, so i got a little way to go 
Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, that's a big one, repentance is a big one, will turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So all it takes is the people who already cl- who are already truly um you know Christians to repent of our sins. Let's focus on us first before we start trying to heal the land. Let's do our part and if we can focus on us and our households and then go from there, you will truly see change. Now, it might be frankly too late for America, but that doesn't mean that should not stop us from being truly repentant. The article goes on, if the Democrats actually believe the science about COVID, there's one thing that they would all acknowledge. COVID is especially dangerous to old people, not to, quote, little children. But Nancy Pelosi, because of the fall, the failing polling and not science, thinks it's time to drop the masks. It's absolutely unreal. And so there's a response to Eric Wasson's tweet from a guy named JG who says, Is it being ancient precondition? The article goes on to say, According to the CDC, there are over 80, there are over, those over 80, excuse me, are 340 times more likely to die of COVID. Now, look, like I said, I am not a doctor. There is a hyperlink there, so let's check it out. So, and I'll try to make sure that all of this is updated into the show notes, but risk for COVID-19 infection, hospitalization, and death by age group. Now, you have um, rate compared to 18 to 29. Um, You have 0 to 4 is one time. Uh, For cases, one time, greater than one time for hospitalization, and greater than one time for death. 5 to 17 is the same thing. 18 to 29 is the reference group. So, you know, these are, no, that's less than one time, excuse me. So less than one time, um, well, you can check out the chart for yourself. But if you come over here to 85 plus, this is according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention at their website. Um, It is 340 times. Now, also keep in mind that this is from, I think, 2019. And, of course, their quote-unquote science keeps changing. So, But this is, regardless, from their website, and it is something that you can easily find, and we will make sure that you have a link to it. So there's just a little food for thought there. Um, now... I found this one interesting as well. This is also from Not the Bee. Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! I just can't get enough of that Nicolas Cage clip, so you guys are going to have to just deal with it. Um, as, a fight, as fighting rages, Microsoft is working with the Ukrainian government to fend off never-before-seen malware attacks from Russia. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys... Um, you could say that we should do this with any news that we read, but understand that the news we are getting out of situations like this is the news that they want you to have. How many times have we seen them completely squash a story? So, but what I found interesting about it is I do believe that Microsoft will take every opportunity they can to gain more global control. Russia thought it would have an easy time steamrolling the Ukrainians, toppling their government and reabsorbing the country into the Federation. That assumption was thankfully incorrect. Yada yada. Let's get to the part about Microsoft. As the tanks rolled in into Ukraine, so did malware. Then Microsoft entered the war. So is like Microsoft supposed to be the hero in this story? Because keep in mind, this is the same company that put the patent on the microchip that goes inside your body. Now, it's not just for microchips, and, and, and to be intellectually honest, they do it for watches and things like that. But make no mistake, the microchip is the goal. And with that, they have a cryptocurrency that is mined through your bodily activity. 
And, of course, the patent number on this, and you can't make this stuff up. The patent number is, um, it's work order 2020060606. So, essentially, we have something that everything in it points to something like the mark of the beast. And now we have, all of a sudden, Microsoft is being the heroes for going in. Now, all of this, and... All of this points to the Great Reset. There is a video over from our friends at Now You See TV. They talked about all the things connected to the Great Reset, talking about Swift, which if you could get through the terrible audio of the last episode we did, which will be uploaded with this one, the fixed audio, we talked about how they're cutting off Swift payments to Russia. Now, apparently, SWIFT is some sort of international banking uh, transaction thing. But I'm going to leave a link to the Rise of the Beast episode from Now You See TV on Breaking Babylon because they point out some excellent uh, some excellent observations about how this could be used to push crypto a global cryptocurrency for the Great Reset and how the whore of Babylon is being overthrown for the Beast system. So... I'll leave that to make sure you guys can find that. But um, so interesting stuff. That's here, here. Basically, here's the point that I wanted to leave you with on that was everything that you're seeing. There is a bigger story going to, and everybody said, "Well, you're just a tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist." And you know, hey, maybe, maybe I am. But here's what I do know: is the Bible says that there is a there is evil forces out there. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against... Well, let me just read it to you. Ephesians chapter 6 says this. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So... <coughs> And these are the powers that the Bible talks about want to put the beast system into play. So I absolutely believe that there is a conspiracy. Um, and I believe, yes, there are some sort of otherworldly interdimensional beings that are behind it. The Bible says there is. The Bible says that there, um, Revelation 16 talks about how three spirits, three unclean spirits like frogs came out of the mouth of the be- dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Um, I believe, you know, I believe there are entities that we don't understand, that we probably cannot fathom, that are behind these plots to bring in tyranny because they think that they can overthrow the Most High God. The ancient book of Jasher, which is an old Hebrew text, mentioned twice by name in the scriptures, says that at the Tower of Babel, the one world order that was around then tried to build a tower and ascend into heaven so they could overthrow God. And I believe these powers are going to try to do that again. And this time it's going to be even worse for them. But regardless of what you're seeing here, know that this is what Jesus says about it. And I will read from the Gospel of Mark. And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And when ye hear, when, when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, which would be what we have going on right now, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end is not, shall not be yet. And why should you not be troubled? Because all of this means that the Son of Man will be coming. He goes on to say, verse 22, For false Christ and false prophets shall arise, and shall shew signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all those... All, I have foretold you all things. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, 
and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels, and he shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost parts of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Now learn a parable of the fig tree, when her branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves. Ye know that summer is near, so ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh even at the doors. Verily I say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Now, watch and pray, he goes on to say, but of that day and that hour knoweth no man, not even the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. And that is exactly why we do shows like this. We are commanded to watch and to pray. And in order to watch for the signs of these times, unfortunately, we have to get into some high anxiety topics like this. But I leave you with this thought today. If you don't hear anything else from this, hear this. The joke is ultimately on these elitists who have chosen to worship these powers of darkness. Because Jesus is going to come back with a flaming sword in his mouth, something that will be that will devour on sight, to the point where the Bible talks in the book of Revelation, they're going to say, let the rocks fall on us to hide us from the wrath of the Lamb. Now, maybe you're listening to this, and you haven't made the decision to follow Christ. And understand, the Bible says that those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But there are things that you must do first. Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And look, all of us are sinners. Every single one of us have sinned. But you can repent from those sins. And what is sin? It's simply transgression of the law. If you've ever lied, then according to God's law, you're a liar. And you are held under the penalty of the law, which is death. Romans 6.23 If you have ever hated your brother, the Bible equates that to the same as murder, because hatred is ultimately what leads to murder. If you've ever looked at a woman with lust in your heart, or if you're a woman looked at a guy with lust, the Bible says that you've already committed adultery with that person in your heart, because, well, if you, in reality, if anybody could act on it, had the opportunity, and wanted to in their heart, they would most likely follow through. The Bible talks about how out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so, it's the same with your actions. Understand that everything starts in the heart, so all of us are guilty before God. But Jesus came, he died on a cross, and his blood as the sinless Lamb of God and the Son of God, God in the flesh, that blood has the power to wipe away your sins and give you a reset, the only reset that should matter. And that gives you the ability with a clean slate to follow after God and to keep his commands to the best of your abilities. If you would like to know more about this, you can check out our show that we do on Sundays live on YouTube on our Course Correction Radio YouTube channel. It's live every Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'd love to see you there. If you have any questions, please feel free to join the chat and we would love to answer those. That's about it for today's show, guys. Thank you guys so much for listening. We're continuing to pray for you. And those of you who are followers of Christ, continue to be watchmen on the wall. God bless you all. We'll see you next time on 33.3 News.